and Akotu Katoa, good morning everybody. It's a great privilege and pleasure for me to be with you this morning and can I acknowledge Professor Mary and the members of the Commission for the work that they do. Uh, it's early days in our relationship but I'm enjoying every moment of it and I'm finding it a fascinating part of the health portfolio to be involved in. Can I welcome all of the collaborative team members who've come together today. I gather for the first time from across New Zealand to create a national network aimed at reducing opioid-related harm in our hospitals. I'm really pleased to be here to open session one, which is the Collaborative's uh, inaugural national event. And I'm delighted to see you all here on a wonderful Wellington day. The next couple of days are going to provide an excellent opportunity for collaborative teams to come together to learn about systems thinking and quality improvement methodologies and tools, to share experiences and, of course, to network with each other. This learning session is part of a process that supports your collective efforts to ensure that every patient gets the best and safest health care they deserve, and in particular, to lead to improvements so that people are not harmed by the very medicines that are meant to help them. I think that phrase bears repetition. Every patient gets the best and safest health care that they deserve and that they are not harmed by the use of the medicines that are meant to help them achieve that outcome. And that really corresponds very closely to one of the key uh, principles behind our national medicine strategy regarding the safe and effective use of medicines. And so the safe use of opioids national collaborative is an important part of the Health Safety and Quality Commission's three year long focus on reducing harm from high risk medicines. The high risk medicines focus is one of key, four key work streams within the Commission's medication safety work program, which is committed to the reduction of patient harm. The Opioid Collaborative is aligned to the Commission's strategic priorities, which are underpinned by the New Zealand Triple Aim, in particular, improving the quality, the safety, and the experience of patient care. Now, you're probably aware that the Commission was established in 2010 to ensure that all New Zealanders receive the best health and disability care within available resources. The reality is that the vast majority of New Zealanders do receive high quality and effective care which is safe. And that is good and provides a platform to build from. But unfortunately, as there always will be, there are a small number of patients and consumers who are harmed while receiving health care in hospital as either an inpatient or an outpatient in community-based health facilities or in their own homes. And that sadly includes harm related to the medicines which they are taking, including opioids. Internationally, the greatest harm from opioids occurs from their illicit misuse and consequent addiction. While we don't have the same level of illicit opioid misuse and addiction as some other countries, there is anecdotal evidence to suggest that prescription opioid abuse is becoming increasingly common. However, the greatest amount of opioid-related harm occurs in healthcare settings, particularly involving situations where the opioids are used to alleviate pain. We know they are high-risk medicines, and we know that errors are likely to cause significant patient harm. Opioids such as morphine and fentanyl play an important role in relieving pain and discomfort within inpatient settings, particularly around the time of surgery. So they are a useful and essential part of the care that we provide. They are prescribed and administered widely, from neonatal to surgical units, right through to the care of the elderly. But every day, patients of all ages are exposed to the real and at times significant risks from the use of opioids in our hospitals, and sometimes harm can occur. 
The sad thing is this harm is often avoidable. Harms may occur in specific clinical settings, such as acute surgical wards, but hospital systems may also create circumstances that increase the chance of harm, in particular during the transfer of care between different parts of the health service. There was recently the case of an 82-year-old patient with kidney impairment who was prescribed high-dose oxycodone to take home. Very sadly, two days later, the patient was found to be in an unresponsive situation in their own home and then died uh, subsequently due to complications associated with opioid toxicity. Now, this is an example of why a special effort is needed to protect vulnerable people from opioid harm. They are the exceptions, and we want to keep them that way, but ensure that we minimise those exceptions as best we can. So we do need to take a close look at things like discharge processes and consider what hospitals can do to prevent such tragedies. The Commission's Atlas of Healthcare Variation recently published information on opioids giving clinicians, patients and providers an overview of their own particular district health board's use. Of every 10 people dispensed a strong opioid in the community, nearly half attended a public hospital as an inpatient or an outpatient in the week immediately prior. So that suggests a form of public hospital trigger that led to the prescribing and the dispensing of a strong opioid. And what we need to be considering is whether this high rate of opioid dispensing is related to prescribing behaviours or to clinical factors such as acuity or disease state. And while it's important to acknowledge the interface between inpatient and other settings, the immediate priority must be the high rate of opioid-related harm currently identified in our hospitals. And that is why the Commission's Board and Medication Study or Safety Expert Advisory Group if ever there was a term that cried out for an acronym, that might be one. <laughs> Why it chose this class of medicines to be the specific focus of this collaborative. Opioids were also identified as a priority area because there's no universally accepted bundle of evidence-based interventions available that can help reduce opioid-related harm. So because of this, the collaborative's approach will inevitably be formative in nature. And the challenge for you is to test interventions and to identify the ones that demonstrate proven reductions in opioid-related harm, which can then be shared nationally. Meaningful and measurable interventions are needed that will make a real difference to reducing harm to patients. When planning your work, consider how you will actively involve consumers. Also consider how your work aligns with the strategic framework in Medicines New Zealand, which I referred to earlier. In particular, the strategy's optimal use of medicines outcome and principles relating to equity, effectiveness and value for money. We know from the experiences of other collaborations that partnership and teamwork can improve the care that we give to our patients. Many of you will be familiar with the central line associated uh, bacteriama, I don't think I pronounced that correctly, or CLAB collaborative, which delivered impressive improvements in infection rates and the enhanced recovery after surgery uh, collaborative as well. The success of the opioid collaborative will depend on many things, including the participation of collaborative teams at learning sessions such as this, which is why I'm delighted to see such a large turnout here today. I wasn't expecting as many as are here. I think that's great. The collaborative is not just a partnership, though, between the Commission, public hospitals and other key stakeholders to reduce harm. It's much more active. It's a vehicle for building capability and quality improvement within our 20 district health boards. So the next two days are going to be about building on the knowledge gain from learning session zero today. That session will provide you with the skills and the knowledge that are needed for testing interventions in your workplaces during the first action period 
and beyond this collaborative for future quality improvement work in your own district health boards. So without further ado, I want to encourage <clears throat> all of you to make the very most of this meeting, to openly share your skills and experiences, your thoughts and your concerns, because this is a collaborative journey we are embarking upon. And it's a tremendous opportunity to share, to learn, and to develop good practice for the future. And I know you will bear in mind as you do so that overriding main goal. All of us who have some role or other in the health sector share the common goal of providing the best and the safest care to New Zealanders. I know you take that very seriously. I wish you well in your discussions, your deliberations, and your debates over the next couple of days. Hopefully you'll get a time to enjoy some of the uh, wider delights of the city, but hopefully also you will go home feeling you've really made a positive difference and that the consequence will be that better and safe health, safe health outcome for your patients and for New Zealanders as a whole. Good luck and have a great time.